Minister, um, the report in the Sunday Times um, was disturbing and alarming for citizens across the state and we have had a really problematic, uh, to be kind, 18 months in terms of the public's confidence in your ability to preside over uh, and to assist uh, depending on what body it is, uh, the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission uh, or and Garda Shikana. Now, your instinct, as it was when there were previous uh, issues that came into the public domain in relation to GSOC, your instinct was to uh, uh, defend the system. And what I found uh, remarkable was clearly your uh, department had briefed the Taoiseach wrongly. Uh, yesterday, which unfortunately the Taoiseach again has been wrongly briefed again today in relation to section 80, subsection 5 of the Garda Shikana Act. It does not require the uh, Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission uh, to pass that information. It says it may. It is their discretion. The Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission does have a responsibility to report to this Oireachtas and it reports, as you know, through the Public Service Oversight and Petitions Committee. Now, as you know, Minister, the Ombudsman Commission was established through that 2005 Act and that followed the crisis of the Morris Tribunal in my home county of Donegal that revealed gross abuses of power by some Gardaí from uh, the rank and file right up to senior level in that county. And it demonstrated the need for change around issues like the handling of informers, around the, uh, around the issues of false arms fines, just a whole range uh, of, of issues, of course, the, the, the terrible ordeal that the McBurdy family went through up there. And that's the context in which we have the Garda Shikana Act, that's the context in which we have the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission and the Garda Inspectorate. But from the get, from the get go, our party argued very strongly that they didn't have the requisite powers to do their job. For example, they do not have oversight over the Garda Commissioner, as is the case with the Ombudsman and the Chief Constable in the north of Ireland. They did not have access to the poll system to get directly to issues without somebody looking over their shoulders. Then there's the issue of the confidential recipient, that Gardaí themselves, on matters of major concern, didn't have the ability to report directly to the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission. But in case there's any doubt that they didn't have the requisite powers, we can see in their own words, their own publication, the issue. Last year, the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission completed their public interest investigation into the handling of informers by Angarda Shikana and our intelligence services. It was a painstaking, years-long investigation. It didn't need to be years. And in that, they revealed the appalling lack of cooperation from senior Garda management with this very important investigation. Now, what was it about? It was an issue of a major drug dealer having charges dropped without explanation and that person allegedly being handled by Angarda Shikana to entrap others. That was the allegations that were in the public domain. They could not have been more profound. Yet, the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission in some cases never received documentation and in other cases it took years. It was absolutely outrageous what they revealed. They also revealed that the lessons of the Morris Tribunal were not learned and that the issue of the handling of informers, which was core to the issue in Morris, and the issue of the retention of contemporaneous notes where people could check back what had happened, and if you were innocent it could be clearly demonstrated. Huge issues. When that was revealed, you didn't say a word, criticising the senior management of Angarda Shikana. You stayed stum. When you were challenged repeatedly by my party, you stayed stum. You said you were waiting on the response from the Garda Commissioner. It took months and months and months. Minister, people will argue that you have too close a relationship with the Garda Commissioner. People will argue that the system of policing that we have in this state is not healthy. The relationship between government and the senior Garda management is too close. The government has the ability to appoint senior Garda management. That's an issue. So we need to see 
a truly independent policing authority in the state with their own independent budget, allocated, of course, from taxpayers' money. That policing authority then would be accountable to this Oireachtas and accountable to a policing board, as is the case in the north of Ireland. We need to change our policing model in this state. It's an unhealthy model, and we've seen repeated examples of a resistance to change, of a resistance to criticism, serious criticism in some circumstances. Minister, that takes me on to the penalty points debacle, which we have seen borne out through the Public Accounts Committee, and indeed the two whistleblowers were pretty much vindicated by the report from the Comptroller and Auditor General. But let's just go back to the start. Here we had two officers who discovered that the system just wasn't working, that there were very considerable numbers of people who were getting penalty points written off with no apparent explanation. So it was one rule for the 70% of people who pay their penalty points when they get them and another rule for, for others. What they were saying was access to friends in uh, certain places could get points written off. It was a very, very serious matter. They reported to the confidential recipient, and it's interesting, the transcript that was read into the record by Deputy Wallace and repeated here by Deputy Collins, and I understand that may come into the public domain in the near future. That's going to be very interesting uh, when it does. But they were stonewalled. That's the bottom line. They were stonewalled. It went to the Commissioner's office. It was investigated. It ran on and on and on. And eventually, the two whistleblowers went to the relevant authorities. They are uh, permitted under the Gardaí Con Act to take it to members of the Oireachtas, which they did. Uh, and they also brought it to the attention of the Road Safety Authority, to the Comptroller and Auditor General, to uh, the Department of Transport and the Department of the Taoiseach. Then, finally, you made a decision. And the decision you made was not an independent inquiry of these very serious matters, of very significant numbers of documentation to back them up. No, it was an internal Garda inquiry, which wasn't acceptable. The police investigating the police, regardless of the integrity, and I have no question mark over the integrity of Assistant Commissioner O'Mahony, the perception, the perception out there was police investigating police. That was wrong. That was a bad decision. What happened then, whenever the publication was reported, was that you went out on the plinth and the Garda Commissioner were more interested in uh, having a go at the whistleblowers and calling them reckless and wild rather than actually dealing with the substantive issues. But of course that wasn't to uh, be allowed to sit for too long. The, the report then subsequently of the Comptroller and Auditor General revealed that one in five motorists facing road traffic offences were getting off, that half of all summonses were not being served, that the scale of the problem identified with the whistleblowers was real and even wider than what they thought. It was a serious, serious matter. Still, you were not going to call an independent inquiry because I challenged you in this very uh, chamber uh, after the publication of that report. I, I almost pleaded with you. Then it went to the Public Accounts Committee and the rest, as they say, is history. You have finally now referred it to the Garda Shikana Ombudsman uh, Commission. And huge damage has been done in between. So I'm saying to you, Minister, that I think you have to reflect on the model of policing and your own relationship. So I'm going to put you to this. Our party are currently conducting research, uh, comparative analysis of the policing model and the Ombudsman model in this state compared to the North of Ireland and other European uh, countries. When that comes back, we are going to put forward later this year uh, the Garda Shikana Amendment Bill 2014, where we will put forward proposals for change. Deputy Wallace did that last year, and I commend him for the huge amount of work he put into it, and we're going to do it uh, this year, uh, and I understand others are looking at uh, proposals too. We need fundamental change to both models, because let's be clear, the overwhelming majority of the members of Garda Shikana uh, are doing a fantastic job. They are people with no question mark. They are at the front line defending our communities uh, and, and they are heroes uh, in many instances in terms of the work that they do. Yet they feel let down by the cutbacks, by the closure of guard stations. Which takes me back to this relationship between yourself and the Commissioner. Because the Commissioner would echo your language. He would say it's modernisation, it's smart policing. Rather than acknowledging that it is really cutbacks, less guard of vehicles, less guard of stations, less personnel, now probably going to fall below that 13,000 template. That's that unhealthy relationship. We need change. Now, finally, um, 
Minister, as you know, uh, the Garda Shikana Ombudsman Commission will come before uh, uh, the committee tomorrow, which I chair, and the answers that we seek will be, will be put to them and will seek to clarify uh, the matters. But one of the key issues is why did the Ombudsman feel they needed to consult with their sister organisation uh, in Britain? Why did they feel that they needed to take um, security consultants from outside this state and bring them in under cover of darkness? What was it that led to that uh, decision? And why was it that they didn't trust the apparatus of this state? You can only come to one conclusion, and we'll tease this through tomorrow, but the conclusion is this. There is a very serious issue of distrust between your office, the office of the Garda Commissioner, and the office of those three uh, commissioners in GSOC. That has to end. That has to stop. It has to be dealt with. The protocols that were put in place of cooperation, uh, we will probe them tomorrow to see how they're working. I understand there are ongoing difficulties in ac accessing documentation, but we'll tease that through tomorrow. But see, when all of this is over and we establish the facts of what happened, what we need to get to in terms of the citizens of this state is a police service uh, from top to bottom that they can have confidence in, that is truly independent. An ombudsman's office that has all the powers we can give them uh, to clearly protect the public, to watch the watcher. That's where we need to get to, and the lessons need to be learned. I would say this finally. I think the only way we can definitively know what was the level of breach of security uh, caused to the office of Garda the Garda Shikon Ombudsman Commission is to have publicised the report from the security consultancy firm. We need to have that published, and I hope that GSOC will agree to facilitating that, because when we can see that, we can have it independently verified. And then I wrap up with this final point. We do need to see an independent inquiry into this matter, Minister. The public will demand it. The public need to know the full facts. They have distrust. They've seen too many instances. Uh, the issue of the Public Accounts Committee hearings did not do much for their confidence. They need to see, uh, and I leave it to the government to suggest, the independent body, whether it be an independent judicial review, whether it be an international body, but somebody needs to externally or, or internally in this state that is truly independent look at this issue. Somebody who is independent from GSOC, from your department and from Agarda Shikana needs to look at this issue and decide and make a ruling. I hope they rule that spying didn't take place. I hope, I genuinely hope that is proven to be the case for all of our sakes. But regardless of what happens, we need to see fundamental change, and our party will put that to you and engage constructively with you, Minister, for the change that needs to happen. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Now the next speaking slot.